Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. The Word Docs would like to pay our respects to the Ghana people on whose lands we are today and to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And we would like to recognise that this is a country of powerful storytelling and knowledges and that we're honoured to be here today. Don't you write when you don't need money, honey. That would certainly make a hit. Welcome back to Word Docs. Uh, I'm Dr. Sean Williams. I'm here with my two buddies, Dr. Amy T. Matthews. Hello. And Dr. Alex Vickery Howe. Bonjour. Bonjour. Oh, French today. Oh. Are you in France, Alex? Is that where you are at the uh, moment? I've never been. Oh. You've never been. Well, there's something to put oh, on the actually, bucket no, list. I have been to France. I'm talking oh, absolute my. nonsense. I've been to France. Oh, went to forgot. Cannes. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, there you go. Bonjour That's to you, start, Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're here today to conduct another Word Docs <laughs> challenge, uh, if Alex can keep it together. Uh, How did uh, I last episode going to France? Like, what kind of idiot doesn't know well, they went to France? Well, you did hit your head in Japan. Maybe that's, it wiped that's it out. True. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry, were you, Sean. Were you ever unconscious in France? Like, unwillingly no, unconscious? No, I was never unwillingly unconscious in France. Okay, well, that's why you don't remember it. You only remember places where you've been unwillingly unconscious. Apparently. Was there a train? Did you... You take a train. At you some took point? a long train ride in France, and there were Power Rangers. This is, there were, there were uh, power, this people is dressed. Not this is a dream. Rangers. This is no, a dream. That happened. Not I, I got that off happened. the train. And, okay, sorry. Continue. We'll come back totally to no. this train story. I need to know about this story. Oh, right. okay. They were promoting the Power minute. Rangers. They were promoting <laughs> promoting the Power Rangers as part of the um, pitching festival in France. And, and oh. yes, I, I actually think it was when we were having lunch, the Power Rangers showed up mm. and um, did a bit and of a little thing. And you forgot all of it. Yeah. Saw so Bert and Ernie too. You know Bert and Ernie? <laughs> you know my I theory that Alex, is, <laughs> that Alex is in a coma. This is, uh, <laughs> this is just further evidence. Well, maybe did, we're in a coma. I feel like maybe I'm in a coma. <laughs> did any of them try to sell you their daughter, Alex? Because uh, <laughs> if, if so, we've got the trifecta. Of Alex's <laughs> coma experiences. It was the German Bert and Ernie. So it was the German people that do Bert and Ernie. So Die they Bert. Didn't, <laughs> didn't sound quite right. But it, yeah, continue. By all, anyway, stop okay. Me. Continue. Right. Otherwise. All right. We're um, on a fast train to our topic now. Right. Okay. <laughs> Word Docs Challenge. Amy, you've got mm-hmm. one for us. Hand it over. Yeah. This is where yeah. we test and critique writing advice. Go all ahead. Right. So this one is from Anne Lamott's amazing book, Bird by Bird, which most people who've studied creative writing have come across at some point. And this was not the chapter that I would normally have picked, but we were looking at some websites that were getting into spirituality in writing, and then I stumbled Mm. across this chapter. Not to be confused with spirits in writing, which uh, we both were all um, proponents of. Alex (laughs) is looking at the clock right now thinking, is it spirits (laughs) o'clock? This is true. So this chapter is called Broccoli. Mm, I like broccoli. <laughs> I'm just going to read though? you. The- Do you really like broccoli? <laughs> oh, I love broccoli. I love broccoli. I love broccoli. All the brassicas. Both Brussels of you sprouts. love broccoli. Mm, yeah. yeah. Do you not love broccoli? No one loves broccoli. That's my saying you love kids. syphilis. My oh. aunt. <laughs> oh. That's drawing a long bow. <laughs> <laughs> my kids the always love category. broccoli. They will eat massive bowls of broccoli. Mm, so I don't know yeah. where this. So you don't like it. What is it? You're a vegetarian. Mm. And you don't mm. eat broccoli. I'm very I came back discriminatory. From I came back from America once and I was so starved of green vegetables that I yeah. ate an entire head of broccoli stir fried in um, oyster sauce and that's all I had for dinner and I, I just inhaled it. But America has, has produce. They don't tend well, to serve that much. When, in California mm. they do, really healthy food in California. Oh, not conference some, California, conference Oh, no, yeah. but conference food is amazingly yes. stodgy. Yes. See, Lots in France they don't understand what a vegetarian is, so they just gave me a dead fish. Yeah. Uh, I mean, With all fish you top. eat is dead. <laughs> but it was like, it was like <laughs> a... He's a live fish. He's a bowl of goldfish. He's a trout. But it was just like, you know, when you get the whole... friends, right? Yeah. The whole fish, like the whole fish, and I'm terrified of fish bones because I nearly choked when I did eat fish, and and I just had to sit there with a dead fish. 
I feel like we've lost Alex today, Sean. Broccoli, He's off broccoli. On talk, talk to me about the broccoli. We keep right. hitting triggers, trains and broccoli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> Alex is rolled up. This this one, I think we might get a rise out of Alex. So oh, excellent. <laughs> I'm just going to read the beginning, and I'm going to abbreviate it a bit because we we don't have forever. So she talks about how there's an old Mel Brooks routine where the psychiatrist tells his patient, "Listen to your broccoli, and your broccoli will tell you how to eat it." Mm, when I first deep. tell my students this, Sandler Lamott says they look at me as if I have as as if things have clearly begun to deteriorate, <laughs> like this show that I'm currently on. <laughs> But it is as important a concept in writing as it is in real life. It means, of course, that when you don't know what to do, when you don't know whether your character would do this or that, you get quiet and try to hear that still small voice inside. It will tell you what to do. Mm. So she says, we listen to our intuition when we're small and then we're corrected, ridiculed or punished and we lose track of how to listen to our intuition. That's her Mm. argument. Um, Okay. So what do you think of that in terms of writing? Well, I think um, in 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 good word docs challenge uh, protocol, we need to go give it a try uh, okay. for for a while, and then come back and report our experiences. Uh, so, and giving it a try means like going to a quiet room and listening, or does it mean pulling out a piece I of broccoli? It means is there something that's not working right now? Have you hit a stale, stale point in one of your writing projects? Have you hit a dead end? She's saying if you can sit still and stick quiet you'll find the answer inside. Okay. So I think like we need to go romantic. try it. Mm. All right. Mm. As it's a bit romantic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's set the timer running uh, and uh, we'll reconvene here very shortly. All right. All right. Welcome, welcome back. back. <laughs> We're back from that beautiful interlude. Uh, we're back. We've tested this process. Uh, I know I've uh, sat in beautiful solitude alone with only a donut, contemplating <laughs> the mystical voice of my muse. Uh, I will report on that shortly. <laughs> Alex and Amy, have you managed to find a quiet time? I actually struggle to imagine Alex sitting down silently for any length of time. <laughs> Do you write? Do you quiet when you write or do you mutter to yourself and stop and exclaim? I imagine you sort of exclaiming aloud for some reason. I, I very embarrassingly, um, I don't, I, see, that's the problem. I don't do either, like, you. ideally, you are either completely silent and very dignified or you are so loud that that's its own thing. But what I do is kind of the whispery version of what you're describing. So I'm like, yeah, yeah but I could do this. Bah, 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 bah. And then she kills kill them sh- all. Uh, kill, kill them again. and eat them and, uh, and then I will destroy <laughs> and I will rule the world. But that wouldn't be scary if you shared an office with anybody, not at all. And, and it's awful when people walk in because you just oh, you look just, no. just crazy enough. Yeah, just crazy enough. For what? But I don't do um, a, a quiet reflection. Like I, I couldn't. Someone was saying to me, um, "You need to start meditating," and I'm like, "Ah, oh, no." Nah, this do article it. talks a little bit about it in no. meditative terms. No, mm, interesting. But you I... do, you do do this kind of thing because you were saying not long ago that you go for walks. And you try walks. and find a new angle. So that's the sense of your intuition, surely. Yeah, but, but it's a little bit more. I guess. I, mean, I think you're absolutely right. So. In a sense, but I, I, I suppose what I push back on is that I would still argue that there's more of an analytical process going on than an intuitive process. So yes, I go for walks, but I'm I'm thinking quite structurally about how to deal with the problem. And I'm going, okay, so I've got writer's block if that happens, going for a walk. Well, what what's a character I really like? Maybe I can pivot to another point of view. Maybe I could um you know, think about this in a different way. Um, what I'm not doing is walking silently waiting for the broccoli to talk to me. Hmm. Does that make sense? That's There's because still you don't an like broccoli. Brain. Maybe if you imagine <laughs> like pumpkin yeah. or something. You're in a pumpkin. Don't like, maybe that would, oh, do you, do you, you don't like pumpkin either. either. What? My mother, I like pumpkin soup in winter, oh, okay? That's it. But my mother puts pumpkin on pizza and I think that's no, the that's devil's wrong. work, isn't it? Yeah, oh, that's yeah, the devil's yeah. alchemy. The devil's, <laughs> the devil's... Kitchen. See, I don't think broccoli should be on pizza either. I think it should be olives, controversially pineapple, onion, capsicum, and that's about it, really. Do people put Chilling. broccoli on pizza? No. No, they do. It's awful. It's really strange. Yeah. Anyway, uh, mm. you mentioned meditation, which reminded me that uh, a long time ago, 25 years ago, I took up meditation 
And I found it very hard to sit still for longer than 10 minutes because at the 10-minute mark, I would start getting ideas. And uh, Ah. if you want to use Anne Lamont's kind of metaphor, the broccoli, my inner broccoli awoke and got bored and started saying, hey, you could do this in your story. Hey, stop thinking about your breathing. Think about the Star Destroyer moment. Does that happen to anyone else when they're exercising? I get that when I'm exercising. Yes, Once my mind goes calm. I, my, your mind goes calm when you exercise. When you get calm, the my mind goes, rush. make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Um, well, see, it's difficult because when I, when I exercise, yeah. I've got a t- trainer who I, I like <laughs> talking to and who also, I think, uses talking about things as a way of distracting me from the exercise. So he will deliberately get me lifting weights and then get me into a conversation, uh, which is much better than just counting the repetition. So um, what about you, Amy? What you, you, you seem to be quite open to this process. I'm quite open to most things, like a flake. I think it's quite interesting. I think... Are you, are you saying that you're a flake? I'm a bit flaky, I think. Oh, well, okay. I'm not down that flaky. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm quite, quite down to earth. I would I'm say. Yeah, open, that's the opposite. Stuff. I would have thought. <laughs> well, short, short, on the other hand, you know, he's so, up yeah, there. Total with flake. The... Um, <laughs> <laughs> See? Exhibit I, A. <laughs> I think I'm open to mostly like giving them a go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not very good at meditation either. Um, and I think it's a chattering monkey kind of mind where you just like, I know that is what meditation is, that you go, that's the thought. I just acknowledge the thought, but I get restless. So I think I'm much better mm-hmm. meditating to music or mm-hmm. exercising or, but I do agree with her that you do kind of have the answers, right, when you hit a all point and it's about finding a grounded, centred place to, to get those answers. So hmm. I think that's she true. Has, she has a whole bit in here about try to calm down, get quiet, breathe and listen to yourself. And she has a thing about cliches and folk sayings and how your mind will in, instantaneously try to go into a groove of a cliche, which I agree. Hmm. I think you see that in student work, hmm. that listening to your intuition partly is about getting to a place of you and not not the culture feeding you the cliches. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Yeah, that's so, really interesting. And I think cliches can be still be really useful and fighting against yeah. cliches can be really counterproductive. But uh, but it is also at the same time really useful to be aware when you're in a cliche and it may not be the best way. Like the first answer is not always the best answer and sometimes mm-hmm. it's and hard sometimes, to put that aside. So little quiet moments. Sometimes can, you get stuck because it feels stale. Do you guys feel that? Like often a character feels stale and it's because you've slipped into cliches and you're not listening. So she's talking about, um, she has a whole bit about the character and just get the character acting and doing and see what they do. And she has, Mm. in the book, she talks about um, a character suddenly turning up in a purple shark skin suit and she's like, where the hell did that come from? And she's like, then you listen to that and you go, well, that character wears a purple shark skin suit. What, What else is they like? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, you're, you're actually turning me around a little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> I've got uh, two points to make. I'll, I'll make the point in support of and then I'll make the point against of, just to give you a warning as to what's about to happen. Yes, so, Your Honour. Yeah, it's a bit like that, isn't it? So <laughs> I do agree that sometimes, like the, the epic, you know, ridiculous novel I just did a draft of, and that was based on a play. And Moby that, Dick 2. Moby Dick 2. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it was... It was a, Return of the Great White Whale. Arr. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. Sorry. No. Cut that. <laughs> nay, nay, it does not. Um, Keel holding. Yeah. <laughs> the word lover. I've got a really good pirate story that I can't, I won't tell now, this, but I'll tell This isn't the pirate ship one. This is when I was one. a pirate in a ghost train once. Oh but, um, my, there's a train and a pirate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel hell. like he's just pulling up yeah. right now. Okay, no, it's sorry. Treat, they've become cliches now, Alex. Go to your quiet corner and think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Find I, okay. I, I'll make these two points and I'll put the pirate story on, on ice. Um, the first point is writing this novel and having a very clear idea of what I wanted a particular character to do and to be, and halfway through realising, in fact, this was the play the novel was based on, but nevertheless, realising that this character was not going to be who I wanted them to be and there was something much more interesting in the idea of not going with that original impulse. So I do think, in a sense, she was, it sounds crazy, but she was kind of talking to me and going, I will not be what you want me to be, I'm going to go a different way. And I kind of lent into that. So, yes, that is a point 
for it's funny, this idea. It's funny, it just characters sometimes just go completely limp. You know, like yeah, like not going yeah. there, not yeah. going yeah. there. Yeah. Well, so just, it got to a point where when it's, the person I've constructed, is it's not plausible that she's going to react the way mm. I want her to. And then, but the second point, the point I kind of against this way of thinking is that I worry sometimes, and I feel like this in our day jobs as well, that if we, if we make the process too magical, if we make it too kind of, mm. ah, 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 <laughs> like... <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, like, oh, it a bit too late. Uh, sorry, no, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Ah, ah, <laughs> like, if we, if we, if we, if this we, is my next album. <laughs> Done. <laughs> if we go too far down to that kind of on a train right here. <laughs> if it goes into like Stonehenge territory, I think it stops us thinking analytically, analytically. through problems. Mm. And 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 I, there's a part of me that goes, I don't want to make it a process that I don't want to promote. That kind of thinking too strongly oh, well, because it can be a block. What I love about you, Alex, is the dissonance. Is the is the complexity that is mm. Alex Vickery Howe. Is mm. that one week you're like no scaffolding, you can't mm. be in partnership, you can't have anything hold you up. The next and it's all about intuition and imagination. Imagination. The next week you're like, let's not be too far down the intuition and imagination. I was told once that I'm deeply epicureal, and I didn't know what that meant. So I had to Google it. But I think it has what to do... What does Epicurean mean? My under, well, Epicurean, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of um, kind of tenets to that or features to that. But I think it, in the context of the conversation, I, this is a long, long time ago when I was a student, I think it's to Were do Were you on with, a train? <laughs> I was not on a train. I was not dressed as a pirate. But I think it has to do with balance and moderation and the idea that... Um, I, I'm kind of wary of any kind of orthodoxy. So whenever we go too far one way, I go, but, oh, analytical, that's a good way of thinking too. And if we go too analytical, I go, oh, that's too much of a scaffold. You've got to have that X factor, that magic. Mm. And so I'm in this seesaw kind of constantly going, we need to be we need to be in between all of these things. So that's interesting. I think this could lead into a nice episode in this series eventually about fear because you have a lot of fear mm. that you do it wrong. Mm, I just, true. I think I'm just very wary of cults. I think, I think, I think <laughs> you're afraid of cults. I think I'm a bit scary of but cults. Do you see the, the bit like scary, bit scared thinking of. there that yeah. you see a writing prompt? I'm afraid of cults. Or it will take us. Of, it will take us to a cult. And before you know it, Amy. Before you know it, you know it's not as crazy as you think. I've been in scenarios <laughs> where people have put bags on their head. As part of a, a part of an artistic process, or, or or I was in an acting class once where a guy was punching us in the stomach to make sure that our muscles in our stomach were strong enough for the laughter. Oh. There's nothing weirder than trying to laugh while there's the a laughter. guy punching you in the stomach. Like you're laughing, he's going bang, bang. I, mean, I, I think oh. Alex has PTSD. <laughs> I think you do, Alex. <laughs> Good lord. I, I um, just, it's just, wow. <laughs> wow, this is another episode. God, this is hot. We've unpacked the whole... Get some therapy. But do you take the point about, like, I do think that, that a little... It's like a tapas bar, right? A little bit mm. of everything is okay. Yeah. But, but diving too far into the seafood dip at the expense of the rest of the meal yeah. is weird. So I guess my point is that a little bit of broccoli is good for you. <laughs> yes. A little bit of broccoli, but you don't want to gorge yourself in broccoli and <laughs> no. get naked and, like, wrap yourself no. in broccoli. But see, again, there you're doing the extreme thinking. <laughs> so put a bit of broccoli in your plate and you're like, no, nah, I'll end up naked and being punched. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm thinking along these lines, Amy. I'm picturing a girl in a tapas bar putting her hand on Alex's thigh and saying, <laughs> Alex, you're so epicurial. Not really knowing what it means, thinking and it means Alex come back. Going, and Alex's going, I'm going to Google that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, and then yeah, falling I apart. Oh, yeah, I am. I really am. And, and, and falling go. apart emotionally because of something that someone said randomly. All right. So, 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 yes, there's a so, point so, for so, and a point against. So I, I actually agree with both of you uh, as the uh, traumatised child in this marriage of mine's. Uh, <laughs> I think it can be really useful to give your subconscious the space to to flash up some cards that might actually mean something. Uh, but I think uh, I agree with Alex in that um, that trick in that instance works only that one time unless you work out what your subconscious did or try to work out what actually happened, why that idea is working for you. So I think as a way of generating movement, I, 
in, in an idea that's stuck, I find that silence and, and dreams too, taking moments away from the conscious problem and letting the subconscious do its stuff, really useful. I would never personalise it as a voice, or anthropomorphise it as a voice or as a broccoli, because it does sound a bit woo-woo to me. But I think whatever metaphor works for you, you know. Um, I, I just um, did it can with I flashcards. Do- one last woo woo though, because this is pretty uh, great. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amy's magic segment. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that can be my theme song now. So I think one thing she's talking about is finding a metaphor for your intuition, which is the joke about the broccoli. Yes, I know. Um, and, I know. And, and she it is says a good broccoli. One too. Broccoli is so ridiculous that it works for me, but this is the bit I really want to get to. A mm. friend says that his intuition is an animal. My animal thinks this, he says, and my animal hates that. So my oh, question Lord. is, if your intuition is an animal, which animal would you be? Oh. Alex is like the Tasmanian devil from the cartoon or something. <laughs> no, think... you're like the... Um, <laughs> Oh, what was the cartoon with like the the, in is the frog that sings? Whenever I looks at it, it's all kind of limp, and then it just gets up and starts singing at you, and no one Hello, will believe my you. Baby. Alex. Hello, my honey, <laughs> that one. Yeah, I don't know what you're Hello, talking about. Hello, my ragtime gal. Yeah, that was a Looney Tunes thing. Um, oh, I think uh, I'm a meerkat. You're a I'm meerkat. A, what's that thing over there? What's that thing over there? Oh uh, yeah, okay. It's so easily distracted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Social. <laughs> yep. What about you, Amy? And like probably like a squirrel or a chipmunk or something, slightly mm. panicked, must get all the yeah. things before winter. <laughs> cram them that, into my squirrels cheeks. like squirrels lose a lot of their nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is still apt. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this episode is racing along. Uh, I, I, uh, as much as I hate to bring it into the conversation of Amy's nuts and Alex's <laughs> broccolis. Whatever. What are you a broccoli animal? What are, what kind of creature are you? I think I'm probably an aggressive animal when I'm riding. Actually, yeah, uh, like a wolverine yeah. or something. Yeah, a skunk. Tasmanian devil. Not to say a smelly animal. <laughs> skunk. <laughs> <laughs> that could be quite aggressive though, or a mink. <laughs> I feel like Sean would be a bit like Tweety Bird. Like looks all nice, but actually there's some there's an edge there. Does Tweety Bird have an edge? I oh, Tweety Bird oh, God, is always yeah. fucking it's a Sylvester sadist. over. Oh, yeah. Go Tweety. I'm Team Tweety. (laughs) So, Alex, we can take another break while you go Mm -hmm. ask your mother, Jeanette, Mm -hmm. uh, about the wank factor. Also ask her what kind of animal she thinks you are. Yeah, we want to know. Okay, I'll come back. That'll be good. Back in a sec. (laughs) (laughs) Just hear the laughter as he goes out of the room. He's going to get a table tennis bat thrown at him. (laughs) She rubbed the game too much. Come in with like a little red dot on his head where the ping pong ball hit him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or a table tennis bat up his ass. I don't know. <laughs> and Alex has returned. I'm alive. back. Alive and well. So um, um, Jeanette Vickery Howe was not available. Uh, oh, she's so not, did she's you not ask here. Mal Vickery Howe? I asked Mal Vickery Howe, which All is right. a different, it's a different thing. We've got another yeah. Vickery Howe. So, this should be interesting. Um, the two questions were, you know, um, explaining the process to him and, and seeing where he stood with that, but also asking what kind of animal he thinks I am. Let's do the and animal first. He looked at me so sincerely and went, you're a lion, son. Which oh. is kind of beautiful, actually. Is that just rubbing in the Lion King now? You, you sure you didn't mishear it and say, you're lion, son. That's not what you're doing in there with those friends of yours. <laughs> It was fair. It was a very warm moment, and he also oh. he he also felt that yes, that time alone with your imagination is very important, uh, and uh, 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 it's where stories come from. <laughs> see that to the different influences <laughs> in my life. Because if I'd asked Jeanette Vickery how that, it would have been deeply cynical. But he's I know you're turning his warmth into something dirty. I can see it in your eyes, but <laughs> yeah, he's he's doing really Sean, they're not me, surely. I'm an innocent in all this. But he was there was a lot of sincerity and a lot of. Um, uh, yes, I think he lives in that space. So he would give it a very low wank factor. And I guess, yeah. what do you think your mother's oh, wank factor oh, rating might have been? My, my mother would have had zero time for that entire conversation. Mm. Um, uh, so my mother's... In yeah, fact, no, she literally had zero time for that conversation, wasn't She left the building. Wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, she saw it was coming. She knew. Uh, so what about you guys? What would you give this on the wankometer? <laughs> 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 Mm. Maybe let's not use that again. Um, <laughs> look, I think it's it it's Wankoscope. trying to oh. theorise something that's very airy-fairy. Mm. 
it's trying to put something that we do do. And it's funny talking about this in because we've all gone seriously back to work this week. And That's what I was like thinking. I think you're going to say what I was meetings thinking. meetings and research meetings mm. and you could never talk about this stuff in an academic context. Ha. What but is your research actually, method, Amy? Oh, I broccoli. go s- <laughs> sit in the corner with <laughs> but, my broccoli. Wait for but, it to talk to me. And, in fact, I have heard people from the drama department get up at full college meetings and try and talk about this stuff. And I cringe, and, I cringe. I, because it is something that we do and it is part of the process tapping into intuition and mm. there is a kind of wordless dream space we exist in that is all true. And I think what she's trying to do is in a very popular way, like for a general public, theorise it a little bit. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit in the middle on the weight factor. I mean, I think mm. you can talk about intuition in a much more, I mean, in fact, people do in medical sciences and psychology and People do talk about this kind of intuition and create creativity mm. in more... Yeah, free association and creative play and all that. We talked about that when back in our yeah. Where Do Your Ideas Come From episode. In more theorised mm. ways. But actually the metaphor is kind of interesting, the idea mm. of, of letting, listening to yourself instead of trying to cram yourself into a, a position to just mm. listen and go, ow, that hurts, better not do that. <laughs> yeah. Alex, what would you give Foot this? does not go there. Yeah, oh, yeah um, exactly. I, look, getting back to my kind of seesaw, everything in moderation, balance, little rant <laughs> or before. Or you'll end up in a cult. Or you'll end up in a cult. Is that um, uh, maybe what I was thinking about, because I was thinking a little bit about work as I said that, is that what I like about creative research is that it gives you room to do both of those things at different stages. So mm. it, it, creative research does encourage you to go to that broccoli space or that Stonehenge space, whatever you want to call it. But then it says to you, okay, you've done that. You've produced something creative. Now reflect on that analytically and really unpack what you were doing. And so I think that I like, the reason I'm, in, <laughs> I'm doing the moderation rant is I think I like doing both of those things. Can I t- interrupt to just give you a quote that supports that from this chapter? Yeah. She says, writing is about hypnotising yourself into believing in yourself, getting some work done, then unhypnotising yourself and going over the material coldly. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, so I think what great. I'm saying is you need both halves of that because if you're just going over material coldly, you're never going to get the really good stuff. The magic. Yeah, but if you're just living in 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 tutu land, then you're never going to really probably tutu land. Yeah, <laughs> what's that? You're never going to. You know, no, no, that's not a reference to anything. That's just where I where I you know. This is every, original IP, people. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you just live in that magical space, are you ever really going to produce a coherent work if you just stay there? I think some people do by maybe by fluke. Like, mm, maybe by fluke. Maybe yeah. with yeah, some, lots of editing, but that's, yeah. I'm kind of. Because I think that mm. self reflection is important, right? I no? think so. Uh, is it? Maybe. Maybe if you don't want to end up in a cult, you have to self reflect. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put that down at a, a five out of 10 on the wank scale. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, did not finish. Uh, so, we went off to do our own little moments of self reflection. We all came back. So, that's a good sign. Um, did we come back inspired at all? Did we solve any problems in our little moment? I think I need more time needs? for intuition. Mm-hmm. I need quite a bit of time to solve problems. But I yep. have to admit, I do, do do this. So, I'm. I do probably finish it because I do use things like listening to music, having a shower, going for a walk as these intuitive times of solving problems and Mm. thinking. And I did find, even though I sort of said earlier that I found that I couldn't, you know, I hit that brick wall with meditating at the end of 10 minutes uh, that always got in the way, I became quite good at meditating for 10 minutes. So, uh, and I started to use that tool as a great way to be creative. So I think I have been known to do this every now and again if I get stuck in something to meditate. So uh, I did finish it um, and I can't remember what groundbreaking idea I had, but I'm sure I had an idea in there somewhere. Out in 2022 will give you the the instructions on how to buy that. Broccoli on a train, new novel from (laughs) Broccoli on a train. With extra power rangers. How do you... No pirates, they're on ice. Uh, How how do you um, quantify do not finish? Because I would say... If you're asking me to sit in a room and do nothing, then it's a do not finish for me. If you're, if you're saying yeah. I'm allowed to do the dishes, have mm. a shower, build a table, um, you wouldn't want me to build a table. I don't think do nothing. You know, I don't the, think. Because I, I, I will have to do another activity mm. or it's a DNF for me. Okay. 
Well, that's fair enough. So broccoli is insufficient for Alex. <laughs> uh, uh, what about the rereading? So I, I know that I will do this again one day because it's yeah. part of my irregular practice. So I would do it again. So I'd give it a what, 10 out of 10. I'll definitely yeah, do too. it again. I would definitely do it again. And Alex, not so much because... If I'm doing other activities. Yeah. And as long as there's no broccoli involved. As long as there's no actual broccoli involved, then, then yes. You kind of irked that you might do something. You're like, I don't want to agree with anything. No, no, no. It's just that I, I really He's do find Epicurean, it. Amy. I mean, He's I'm an Epicurean. I'm an Epicurean. I mean, that's my cult. I do actually find <laughs> it hard to sit in a room and do nothing. I, can't, I, don't, I don't do well doing that. I just get irritated that I'm not doing something. So I have but to at least be walking the dog. Sometimes, you, Alex, nothing can be really something. Oh, my. Uh, Are you Epicurious? Come and join oh, Alex Vickery Howe. <laughs> I think I'm probably a, he- I'm a hedonist, if anything, really, probably. No, you're not, are you? Yeah. You go oh, to the yeah. gym. I don't think so. Not You've in the You've got discipline. You sit up until 3 a.m. and write books. Yeah, but Even I eat donuts things. while I'm doing it. Mm. Well. And he enjoys <laughs> writing the books. So Two things at once. Can't do one thing at a time. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that's true. Right. It is actually very true about you. No, mm. no, I can't. I can't do one thing at a time. I have to do five. Um, I will tell my story about the pirate. A ghost train another time, but we'll put that one on ice. Yeah, so watch out for that, listeners. Thank you, Amy, for coming up with that excellent, excellent uh, piece Who's of Who's volunteering writing. to do the next one? Who's going to find the advice, Alex or Sean, next time? Well, we'll find out next episode, won't we, listeners? Uh, <laughs> Anne Lamont, was it? That Anne, was Anne Lamont. Anne um, Lamont. So it's spelled right. and it's called Bird by Bird, and it's a lovely mix of kind of memoir creative writing, um, tips, and it's a mixture of kind of stories about life and writing. It's a very good book. Well, it's she got not, me there in the end when that, you know, coming funny. out of the hyp- hypnosis, I, I, she got me there. That's good. So excellent. Thank you very much. Until our next episode, thank you for listening. Alex, Amy, it's always wonderful watching you guys disagree and then end up dis- in da- in complete always agreement. Lovely, <laughs> yeah, always lovely watching you guys disagree and ending up in complete agreement. Uh, I hope we get to do that again soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Why don't you write when you don't need money? All your notes sound alike too much. All of them start with I love you, honey, but they end with the same old touch. Just for a change, send a nice loving letter and cut out that please remit. Why don't you write when you don't need money, honey? That would certainly make a hit. <laughs> Why don't you whistle again for us, Sean? Or. <laughs> so he's become a very good. good yeah. He's like an adept professional whistler. I've done a lot of wheeze since 1999, <laughs> so I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> I can't quite get that high note in the uh, the march, though. <laughs> this could be you, Alex, one day. Just drink lots of water. <laughs> this could be me. I don't think don't ever. See, I can't do it. <sighs> That's it. Of course, it's a Pavlovian problem because then you start to associate whistling with weeing. So I've just wet myself basically by... No, I haven't. (laughs) (laughs) Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.